Welcome to uh, VE3 WDM Shack. My name's Mike, and uh, what you're looking at is my new Elecraft KX3 kit. And uh, it arrived on uh, Thursday, and I'm going to do a, a YouTube video, not a step by step assembly, but I want to break it up into portions of the assembly. And uh, you'll see the camera being turned off and on again as uh, I break from one section to assemble the radio and then come back in again to show you the next section. And I hope to maybe explain some of the troubles that I've had during that assembly, if there is any, uh, or things that uh, you may pay particular attention to when you get your kit and you're assembling it. What I got here was, let's see, move this out of the way, the... Uh, internal antenna tuner, the ATU. That was bought separately. I got the uh, roofing filter and uh, purchased the, um, not purchased but ordered, the USB cable to go into the computer for updating the Elecraft K3, KX3, sorry, and then the uh, cable kit for any digital operations. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. Then you've got two boxes. This box has the hardware in it, the enclosure, screws, nuts, bolts, and so on. And this uh, enclosure has the electronics. Uh, I believe it's two boards that uh, uh, make up the Elecraft KX3. So what I'd like to do is um, have this video as a way to make things easier for your assembly if you're going to do it. And um, hopefully the video will help make some things a little more clearer than what maybe would be shown in the manual. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, take the kit and do inventory and just check out all the parts, make sure everything's there, and uh, separate it and familiarize myself with all the parts and get it ready to go. So I'll be back in a little while and we'll see where we're off to. Thanks. Welcome back. The uh, inventory or checking all the parts has been done and uh, nothing's missing. Everything's here, and uh, all the checking of the parts has been uh, checked off here in the back of the Elecraft manual there. They have a uh, list of the parts with a description, an illustration, and uh, the quantity of each part. And I find the illustrations very helpful. It kind of helps to know what the actual piece you're looking for is, and sometimes they're very similar. So what I do in my inventory is uh, I buy at the store a whole stack of these bags, and I get some labels put on them. I used to have these sticky labels. And for the small parts in all my kits, I always separate them and uh, put them into small bags. So I find some of the screws and the washers are very similar and uh, when I'm assembling the kit they can get confused. A good example is uh, these uh, uh, pan head screws here. They were uh, in the kit with a mother uh, quarter inch 440 pan head screws looked exactly the same as these ones but these particular ones here are nylon and uh, there's uh, six of them and they're for a particular function in the assembly that where they have to be nylon and uh, by not separating them like this and just dumping everything on the uh, on the, the table here I could have gotten confused and maybe put a nylon screw in thinking it was uh, steel tightened it down and stripped it so I find that helpful by bagging everything and then I put it all apart, say, for the rear panel in what I call the rear panel bag and everything's in there. Uh, the uh, control panel bag here, everything is uh, packed away in there and they all have separate little individual bags for the smaller parts. Now some of the larger parts uh, that come from Elecraft, for example here, the uh, VFO knob, it's pretty obvious it's there. There's two pieces to it. I check it off again in the uh, in the manual here. You'll see the tick marks all down here. And when this page is complete, up in the corner, I just put a tick mark up here. Again, here's another package from Elecraft that is the speaker and uh, the battery case. It's pretty obvious that that's what's in there. So I just go through the checklist again and check it off that it's there. The other thing I find that is really helpful by putting things in a bag like that is here's a 440 uh, standoffs. I say there's two in there. Now, if I get to the assembly and I open this bag up and I only find one, well, I know that when I got it from Elecraft and I unpacked it here at home, there was two. So it didn't come short-shipped. It's either on my table somewhere 
And what I find a lot is within these bags, sometimes these little Ziploc bags will open and I'll find the piece down here in the bottom somewhere. So I know that when um, these are done individually, and I've got six pieces, that if I open this up and there's five, well the sixth piece is somewhere here in the shack, whether it's on the floor, in a bag or something. The other thing I do now, you're going to have to forgive me here, I'm doing this on my iPhone camera on a tripod, so I'm going to have to move the camera around a bit, hope it don't make you dizzy. But what I do with the smaller parts is over here, in this box, I put a piece of the bubble pad in. And here's some spare parts that Elecraft sent, which was good because I was a few lock washers short. But what I do is I pour the smaller pieces into this bubble pad in the box, and I find that the, the smaller items stay still, they don't roll around. If I put them on my desk, they have a tendency, unknowing to me, to roll off the desk and onto the floor. And some of them, it's usually the smallest parts that roll off and onto the floor. Or, if I just have a normal box without the bubble pad in it, sometimes these little screws will roll up into the corners here, underneath the box, and you'll think you don't have them. But in fact, they're in the box, they've just rolled under the corner here or something. So that's one of my little ideas that I've come up with, is put this bubble pad in here, and um, uh, keeps the parts from rolling all over the place, and then I can group them with uh, the tweezers. I just kind of group them in their small little groups here. If there's you know so many pan head screws or so many lock washers or something like this or resistors, I just put them all off in the little sides. Now, if there's any electrostatic sensitive uh, pieces, they'll stay in their bags, the electrostatic bags, and uh, not go in this uh, bubble pad here at all. So let me bring you back over here, and uh, as I say, sorry for the movement and set you down. So that's it. The, um, everything is bagged and ready to go and uh, what I'm going to do now is just pause the video again and uh, start the assembly and I'm going to reappear after uh, a couple of the sections of the assembly are done and we'll uh, go over what's going on. So thanks very much and we'll uh, see you shortly. Welcome back and what I've done now is the next step was on the enclosure components there's some tape it has to be removed and what it does is it exposes some bare metal parts on the uh, on the Elecraft KX3 enclosure. Let me just show you here. You'll see on this front panel, we just get, there you go, you can see here there's some bare metal and some spots here and here where some tape has to be removed. It shows you uh, in the assembly manual where these spots are to be, uh, to have the tape removed. Some of them are on two sides. Here you see a little spot right here and uh, on the back as well. The tape comes off fairly easily. It usually comes off in one piece. It is on very well, but can be started, as they say in the manual, uh, with a screwdriver. And just start to peel it and you can actually take it off yourself. Now I did find right here in the corner, right down there, a spot that wasn't taped that should have been and uh, I had to sand it and it does mention that in the manual just to double check that all the spots here's some more spots here that were taped sorry there you go um, just to double check and make sure I just find one spot that wasn't uh, taped and I had to sand it with some sandpaper but that's no big deal at least it was found after that what I did was there is the uh, speaker in the uh, KX3 that had to be installed. Now the speaker has had a few issues and uh, on the Elecraft reflector there's been some issues with vibrations on the speaker and uh, vibrations being heard and some um, folks have tried to come up with different fixes. Now I did notice on the speaker assembly there's a screen mesh screen here that has to be put on but in behind that where it sits against the speaker uh, it's rubber. I'm not sure if that is an add-on, but that rubber kind of cushions the speaker away from the uh, the metal enclosure here. The other thing is um, uh, Julian uh, G4ILO on his blog had also mentioned that in the speaker here, this is a very powerful, see if we can get it here for you, in the speaker here it's a very powerful magnet and um, the uh, washers, lock washers and so on at the plant can get uh, inadvertently attracted to the the magnet and he found some lock washers in his speaker uh, housing uh, 
that he removed and you have to put on some uh, of those magnifying goggles to see it I had a good look at mine and it was clean there wasn't any uh, lock washers or anything in there so that's one thing to keep in mind when you do get your speaker is just have a good look in there with those magnifying goggles to see if you can see anything in there either washers lock washers because some of these lock washers are very small and they have no problem hiding in there another um, event that I had while I was putting this speaker together is you'll see here there's four screws that uh, hold the speaker uh, to the metal frame. Now, when I was doing my parts check, I came across two dash fifty six quarter inch screws. These um, zinc, nice shiny screws here. Then there was some other screws that were two dash fifty six nine thirty seconds, which is a very odd size. And um, I have the. Uh, checklist that I do as I explained in the first part of the uh, video here but also what comes with the Elecraft manual is the errata sheet and what that is is it's a sheet that has changes in it that aren't yet in the manual and uh, this is it right here let me just bring it up just a sheet of paper and there's a bunch of uh, changes on there and what that is is very important because now with me with the speaker issues um, when I had read about the uh, 930 second screw, I thought, hmm, I wonder if they've changed the screw around a bit to um, see if that fixed the problem. What I did was I went through the manual, and I couldn't find anywhere in the assembly where they were using a 930 second screw. But in the errata, it said to turn to, let me just move this out of the way here, turn to page 29, 28, 24, 26, and 29. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. And excuse me while I move that. Now, you'll see here a highlight on uh, page 29. This has to do with the battery holder. Now, this highlight means to me when I turn to that page that something here has changed. And I have to go to the errata to look at it. Because here it says, 2-56 quarter inch screw. Now, when I go to the errata sheet, it tells me, no, no, it no longer is a quarter inch screw. It now has been changed to the 932. So that's where the 932 screw goes. And at first I was a little confused thinking that the 932 may be for the speaker issue. But in fact, it wasn't. It was for the battery holder. And uh, the only way I would have known that is to check the errata. If you don't go through the errata sheet and maybe either highlight where the changes might be or actually just write the changes in, you may end up causing yourself a little bit of grief in that you will install the wrong part somewhere and it may have been changed because it did cause a problem. So there you go. So in this uh, step we removed some masking tape which came off very easily. And again, check over the unit, and uh, it shows you where all the pieces of masking tape should be. And if not, you may have to do what I did right here and do a little sanding. No big deal. Also, lastly, when you're putting in the speaker, these screws here go into a plastic housing on the speaker. It says in the manual to be very careful, and that's true. You can strip the speaker because it's just plastic. It's kind of self-threading into, uh, the screws are self-threading into the speaker. The other thing is, use a good screwdriver. Uh, one that uh, fits snugly into the Phillips head. If not, you'll end up stripping these screws or any other screws that are on the, uh, on the unit. So a good screwdriver set is well worth the money. And uh, that's it. So we're going to move on to the next step, and we'll talk to you in a few minutes. Bye now.